And we're rolling out of the Detroit Greenfield RV Park, heading back over to the Ford, the Henry Ford in the Greenfield Village. We're gonna check out the museum today. Not much to tell you about this park other than it's pretty convenient to the Henry Ford. It's about 20 minutes, you know, 20 miles, so it's 20, 25 minutes, something like that. We asked for a lakefront site, so we thought, why not have something with a view? And we did get the lakefront, which is which is cool, and there's that, but this is also one of those campgrounds that has uh, seasonals that tend not to keep their stuff too neat, so here out the back you have this beautiful view of the lake, and then out the front you have this view of the seasonals. So. Well, we cannot say too much about the campground because we didn't use the facilities. They have laundry and bathrooms. We didn't use any of that, so we couldn't tell you if they're good or not good. But the laundry room was cheap. Uh, it was like a buck a piece. Yeah, but washer, a buck dryer, and it was quiet, extremely yep. quiet. So that's a very nice a plus. It's somewhat in that farm slash industrial area, uh, but it's very close to some conveniences like some uh, big stores and fast food if you're into that, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So it's not that bad. Very close to Ann Ar Arbor and Ypsilanti a lot closer to those than it is to Dearborn, but not too bad. So back to the museum we go. You ready for a day of museum, automotive museum? My feet are ready. Ah. Uh, it's gonna be a long day, I know it. Yes. This giant Uniroyal tire here just off the side of I-94 used to be a Ferris wheel and they built it, I think, for one of the world's fairs and now they've got it here. It used to be split in the middle and the cars would rotate around the center. That's kind of cool. We're parked here at the Ford Museum, but I gotta show you this. This is pretty cool. That out there is the test track. I don't know how much of that you could see because I couldn't see over the fence, but inside of the coach you could see that that was the test track. A lot of new cars getting tested. Pretty cool. She's waiting for me. She's impatient. She wants to get in there. What's that? You're burning daylight. <laughs> Showing all those amazing cars at the track. <laughs> I don't know if they could see anything. At some point we'll go over all the ticketing and stuff when I'm standing in front of a sign and can read most of it. <laughs> but basically they have a package here that's $52 that includes all three of the main attractions. I think it actually includes all the attractions. So it would include your museum, the village, your Rouge tour, for the, which is the factory tour, I'm and then the sure. giant screen. I'm not sure it includes the the old pass ride that we. No, did it yesterday. does not include the the pass ride. That's the all the ride passes are extra, but it includes quite a bit. Parking here is six dollars. For some reason, we paid a discount through the campground, which included free parking. And then when we just came in now, instead of paying eighteen dollars a piece for the Rouge tickets, because we only bought a two ticket. Attraction pass. I know this is all confusing, but we only bought a two ticket attraction pass which included the village and the museum And we were gonna pay 18 bucks for the Rouge tour We showed them the other passes and they gave us free parking today plus nine dollars each for the Rouge tour. No idea what's going on assembly plant now at the Rouge factory. Can't take you guys with us. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry. 
We did a quick lunch at the Michigan Cafe. Options for vegetarians are, are limited, but for all you other folks, no problem at all. Now it's time to get busy in this museum. We got a lot to cover in a short period of time. Like there's just so much stuff. Nineteen forty nine Airstream Trailwind. A Gilkey tent trailer from nineteen twenty seven. Lori, there were a lot of people that own these, but nobody admits it. Welcome to the minivan. That and the Aztec. <laughs> This thing here is the 1865 Roper, and it is the oldest surviving American car. It was steam-powered. So Henry Ford, like it says in his little thing here, didn't invent the car. He invented that car. And it was gasoline-powered. Here's your Model S, Lori. Nineteen thirty-two V eight Cabriolet. That's pretty nice too. For those of you folks who thought the electric vehicle is new, here's a 1900 wood electric truck. Very pretty. You guys might remember that we looked at one of these down by Springbank Park in my hometown of London. So I just saw this old retro RV sitting here and decided that I wanted to come and take a look at it. I don't know if it's for sale. Check this thing out. I can't believe it's in a museum. Makes me want to go back and try and buy that one. This particular 1975 FMC was part of a TV show called On the Road. So you guys may have remembered that. The guy named Charles Keraltz. 1914 Detroit electric model 47. See another electric from the early 1900s. Kind of makes you wonder why we haven't already had electric cars. Willys, yeah, really popular drag cars. If you guys remember, we actually saw the original of this in Washington, D.C., but that's still pretty cool. Douglas DC-3. Okay, Lorena and I are here at the airplane shop. And uh, let me see, where are we? Yeah. Airplane shop. And so we are making our paper airplanes. This is mine here my design, Lori's. Okay, Lori's design. We're gonna go over here now to the 
flight test area. We're here in the testing area. Here you have 22 feet in the target. Go ahead, guys. Go ahead. Now it's now it's time to test our airplanes. Okay, Laurie, step up and give your airplane no, a I toss. Need to you need to redo it. Why? Problems in my design. Oh, there's problems in your design. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna give my design here a toss and see what happens. This is gonna be embarrassing. Yeah, it didn't fly very well. It kind of spiraled and hit 12 feet. Mine came back to her. Lori's came back to her. <laughs> okay, good thing we're not designing I aircraft. You. There was a flaw in my design. <laughs> uh, the good news is, neither of us are airplane designers. You're all safe. That was horrendous. And then the kid behind us had some weird looking upside down one that flew all the way to the back wall. It was awesome. Okay, we've seen a lot of what we came to see in the museum. Actually, we probably only saw a part of what we came to see, but there's a couple things that we want to see. One is the Dymaxion house, and that is a house that was designed by Buckminster Fuller. Probably don't know who he is, but he's also the guy that did the geodesic dome, like Epcot Center type stuff. And we also want to find the bus that Rosa Parks was on. That'll be cool. And here is the Dymaxion house. The circular house of the future. That didn't quite happen, Lori. No, it looks like a, the airstream of houses. Yes. It's kind of like aluminum. Oh, that is kind of true. All right, let's go check it out. All right, Lori, show me your new home. The, the closets are pretty cool. Yeah, this is cool here where this this moves one way or another, but they have it so that you can't move it too far. But that's actually a great idea. I like that, the revolving closet. I actually like how the walls don't go all the way up. That's kind of cool. Oh, yeah, the back of the revolving shelf. And this here is the central, the central post. And this is where all of your utilities, all of your heating, electric water, all came down through the center and then could be distributed through there. So that's pretty innovative there. Small foundation, so you don't too much. Yeah, not much you can wash in there, but how are the drawers? No, oh, they're all sealed. This would be a laundry unit. That's the, the kitchen. The living room's a pretty decent size. Vitals down here, they want to make sure she doesn't pass out or die while she's undergoing this process. 
And then you come around to this corner where you're in the middle. So we are on the bus that Rosa Parks was on uh, when she started her peaceful protest, and we're actually sitting in this seat. This is the seat where she sat. Now, obviously not this seat. This thing's been restored, but this was the area that she was in on the bus. Pretty amazing stuff. Pretty amazing history. So this bus was purchased by the Ford Museum. They outbid the Smithsonian and the city of Denver, which is weird, but that's what they were telling me. Paid $490,000 for this bus, and then they spent a little over 200000 restoring it to the condition it's in now. What a really cool piece of uh, history. What it's amazing is they allow you to be inside the bus. So it's not like you only see it behind glass like any other stuff. It's like you are able to be there and sit where Rosa sat. Yeah, so very, very cool. significant piece of history. So something you guys should check out. Now talk about a crazy piece of history. This was the rocking chair that President Lincoln was in when he was shot. This is pretty crazy. Okay, I almost went past this, but Lori made me stop, so check this out. That drop leaf table right there, that was owned by Mark Twain. That right there, it's a portrait of Mark Twain. This right here is a writing desk that was used by Edgar Allan Poe. And this table and chair were both owned by Abraham Lincoln. That chair owned by Peter Schuler, and this rocking chair was owned by Cornelius Vanderbilt. Pretty cool stuff. Lori, this would be the area of the tiny house tiny movement, house so movement. check out your new home. I'm liking the red one more. Okay. Well, they have this natural light, but you can totally fit a kitchen, a bed, a little small sofa, and a small table, so you can. All right, let's check out the interior then. You can, you can totally pull it off. All right, so are you gonna plan on putting a, a queen in here, or you, what kind of bed you this think? A full size bed. A full size and bed. It's gonna be on the loft. Oh, okay. So you can put up in there. You have to maximize space. Oh, okay. So that's yeah, and you have natural light coming in. Mm -hmm. So. So you'll be sitting in the bedroom, and then this would be the well, kitchen. No, right now I'm sitting in the kitchen. Oh, you're in the kitchen. Yeah. Okay. The bathroom will be here. Oh, okay. And the sofa. And then the over there. where my knee is, that's the yes. living room. I don't think this will work. <laughs> that thing is cool. And that might be the biggest wiener I've ever seen. This was Reagan's car. 1972 Lincoln. This was JFK's car, 1961 Lincoln. This is called the Bubble Top. It's a 1950 Lincoln. Called the Sunshine Special, 1939 Lincoln. And this is called the Broham. Broham. 1902 Broham. Are you ready to get out of here? Yeah, I think my feet are ready. Okay. This is one of your favorites right here, huh? So, Miss Lorena, that is the end to our day at the well, Henry Ford. Like two days. Two days, yes. Yeah. And we highly suggest that if you're gonna do this stuff, you do three days at least. I would do one day for the Ford factory tour, take a break, do another day in the museum, take a break, and do another day in the Greenfield Village. Greenfield Village, would you agree with that? No. No. I will do it in two days with a break in between because I think uh, Greenfield Village needs an entire day 
But you can do the factory and the museum in one day as but well. But you would want to be at the factory first thing when it first, first opens, so 9.30 so or something like that. Everything in line is working. Yeah. I make sure it's not the one month, like around June of the year, where they retool and they close the factory. Yeah. The beautiful. This is a crazy building. It used to be a school, the Henry Ford. Still well, well, one thing I will say, we timed the factory tour perfectly. We got on the 1120 bus from here, and when we got there, the line was shut down for lunch. It reopened at 1227. Very and precise. so we caught the, <laughs> the line coming back up. That was really, really cool. So they do take a break. No one here will tell you that, which is really weird, because they don't want to guarantee you that there's production. I get it. But their lunch break is from 12 to 1230. So just <laughs> so you know, if you get to the factory at 12, no one's going to be working and the line isn't moving. They told us the line moves all the time. Not true. The pricing, I'll put the pricing up here because and show you the, the stuff. Place. It's all over the place. Depending There's some half off deals, which is what we found out is why we paid $9 for the Rouge Tour today. And then there's some things where you can double up on some attractions, triple up on some attractions. And so I'll just put all that up here and play some cutesy little music so you can see that. But for us to try and give so, you all of this yeah. options are all, crazy. Us personally, we pay $59 for everything. Yeah, that includes each. the museum, that includes the factory tour, the Greenfield Village, and the all day ride pass at Greenfield Village. But with that being said, we got a discount because in the park uh, campground that we stayed this morning, where we left this morning, uh, they sell tickets there at the discounted price, but it's only for two attractions. Yep. But even with that, it gave us a discount versus buying everything right here. Yep. And I can hope that you guys see that by the video, this is not just about cars. It's not, well, if you love cars, you should come to the Henry Ford. This is about innovation. It's about transportation. It's about a little bit of everything. There's furniture in there and there's equal uh, focus, civil rights. There's all kinds yeah. of crazy stuff. They focus a lot on science and innovation, but in a lot of fields from furniture to cars to uh, yeah. aerospace to a lot of stuff. So don't think you have mm -hmm. to be a car guy. Oh, I don't, I don't like Ford. Doesn't matter. Come here anyways. And with that being said, what would you rate this thing? Now let's rate it as the whole thing, like the whole kit and caboodle, the, the tour, the museum, the village, the whole thing. What would you have to say about that? It's, it's hard to rate because for us, like this specific thing, we like cars. We both do. Not only Paul, that is the and guy in the Henry Ford. and all that. Henry Ford is an entrepreneur. So for both of us, this was a bucket list. Absolutely. For both of us. But I think the least category you should put this one on should be day trip. So if you're close enough somewhere, just make it up here. Yeah, if you're within a day of it, you live within a day out, there's no excuse not to come here and check it out. It is absolutely amazing. There is so much stuff to see and do here. It's really cool. A lot of history, but a lot of science and, and you know industry and things like that as well. So just incredible. Absolutely mm -hmm. incredible. And with that being said, this is, we're going to end this one. We got to get down the road a little bit. So if this is your first time here, it'd be awesome if you subscribe to the channel, stay up to date on all of our travels. It'd be equally as cool if you liked the video and share it with some friends and do some of that sort of thing. So we'll see you guys again soon in another one. Take care now. <laughs> Bye guys. Bye. Let's get on down the road. Yeah, we don't know where we're staying by the way. No. Stay we're going to, the if there's some stuff we see tonight, which there probably isn't, we're going to go play in rush hour traffic. If there's something exciting, we'll throw it in another video so you guys can see that. Not likely. <laughs> or not you guys will never know Just but in the next video we're going to show up somewhere different so don't be surprised and share it with some friends and do some of that sort of thing so see you guys again in new so, we'll almost, see almost, almost got it almost <laughs>